This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based coffee company who are a premium, small-batch, roast-to-order, veteran-owned coffee company. Uh, they are located in Perrysburg, Ohio. They are fair trade certified, USD organic, and integrity is their core value. They have high quality coffee beans from far off lands such as uh, Brazil, Colombia, Indonesia, and much, much more. Coffee is available in K-Cup, gift cards available, and shipping is free for everything $50 and more. Again, be sure to find out much more. All, all the coffees that they have over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee rooster. What is up, YouTube? What is up, guys, down in the Discord? We got a few people down in, this, in the Discord tonight. Kyle, this is a, this is a Slew Poops episode. We're going to talk about two basketball games that, that happened. Uh, one of them literally just finished for us, so that's always fun. And, uh, I don't know, you, you want to say anything else to our uh, exclusive audience that the audio listeners can't hear? Do you, have, do, you, do you have any, do you have any like, bad things you want to say about the people who only listen to the audio of the show? This would be the perfect time to say it. I don't have anything bad. It's, <laughs> it's their preference. It's their preference. Do you want to listen to audio? Fine with that. You want to listen to YouTube? Fine with that. Also, it's, it's, it's a bigger in. chunk. It's, it's also a bigger chunk of our audience since, um... No, 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 Matt. It's not. It's not whiskey. I'm still getting better. I'm. I'm not quite 100, percent but I'm. I'm getting better. <clears throat> so let's let's go ahead and start. As the he show clears here. his throat directly into the microphone. <laughs> We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? I do not, Kyle, have any complaints. None that I'm willing to share publicly. Anyway, uh, Kyle, this is a Slew Poops episode. Slew Poop episode. We uh, we just uh, finished watching. Watch, watching? Just finished watching The Watcher. Uh, we just finished watching, Kyle, uh, the Ohio State Northwestern game, the basketball game. Um, so we're going to talk about that, but... Uh, before we have our dessert, we have to we have to eat our meat before we before we eat our pudding. So um, we are we do have to talk about Ohio State versus Indiana, a game that uh, did did not go well for for Ohio State. Nah, it it, it did not. Um, they lost 67-51, 16 point loss, and this was one of those games I was really worried about. When you had EJ Liddell not playing well and, and nobody else was there to really step up, that, this is the kind of game that um, that happens here. Only 51 points for the game, shooting 30% from the from the floor and from three point as well. Just not going to cut it. Not going to cut it there. EJ Liddell went three for 12, only one for five behind the three point line. If there's anything good about this? They shot well in free throw line. They only missed one free throw. <laughs> but every, everything, everything else, just not that good. 15 turnovers. Again, still turnovers, turnovers. Just such a big part to this season. If they can really knock the, they can really reduce them down to under 10 turnovers for a game. This is this is one of the best teams in the country right now. But it's part of the the team right now is these darn turnovers. Right. And, you know, we talked about this a, a bit during our last Sloop Hoops episode. It's partially to be expected. They had a kind of a long break due to some uh, COVID cancellations. Um, they had started the season bad on turnovers, then got better. And then they, they went on this break and they came back struggling with turnovers again. So, you know, not, not to jump, not to jump ahead to the next game or anything, but they did do better with the turnovers against Northwestern than they did against Indiana. Um, but, you know, you, you might also say, m well, maybe that's just because the, the competition was higher. You know what I mean? Like, may how, how much of Indiana versus all the other games they've played so far this year is the fact that, you know, Indiana, 
is is an eleven and three team. I, I think they're better than. You know, I don't know. It's how it, it, I'm still you know, struggling are, with who is Indiana right now. You know, I think they, they, they will are, be they, right. They are a better team. They are a better team. I mean, you got you got Trace Jackson Davis, who's one of one of the best players in the Big Ten right now, and he had a, had a he, he was the reason why Indiana won. Twenty seven points there, shot really well um, on the floor as well. Eleven for seventeen. Uh, 12 rebounds. Yeah, he, he was the reason, and I mentioned it when we were talking about Indiana in our previous episode here. Going to come down to their their two forwards, uh, Trace and Race. And surprise, surprise, those are the two players who have the most points for the team, 27 and 11. And, and then when Ohio State's main guy only scored 11 points, and then the, um, and then the talented freshman who's really come along uh, these past few games had 13 points. Not going to cut it. Not going to cut it. You're not going to win games like that. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it is when when EJ Liddell struggled. Um, not uh, excuse me, brain farting coming back around. Almost here. Almost here. Almost here. When when EJ Liddell struggled against Nebraska. Ohio State was able to make up for it by by Brennan having an amazing game. Okay, EJ Liddell down, Brennan up. Brennan has his career game as a Buckeye so far against Nebraska, but we you didn't have someone really step up against Indiana that way. Um, if we if we take a look at the box score, who, who scored the most points? Uh, it was it was still Brennan, but thirteen. Your, your highest scorer on the team was Brennan at 13 and Liddell at 11. That's that's not going to cut it. Like, there are too many scorers on this team for that to happen. There are too many potential scorers on this team for that to happen. Um, yeah. Well, and, th- and this was a close game, like with 640-ish, under seven minutes left in the game. Uh, State was only down by... Four points. It was a four-point game, 48 to 52, but right there, 640 left. Ohio State has 48 points, only scoring three points, that final 640 of the game there. That that tells you right there of um, the reason Ohio State lost there. They just, they went on a, what is it there, a five-minute spree without Jeez. scoring a single point. Yeah, I mean, well, and that, that's going to kill you against a team like Indiana. I, I think I, I said, I don't know if I tweeted it or if I just said it in the Discord at one point. I kept looking up. I kept watching the game thinking, wow, I, I don't, this team is losing so hard right now. They aren't competitive. They're losing so hard right now. And then I'd look at the score and, you know, they'd be down by five. <laughs> Oh my God, we're getting crushed right now. What the hell's happening? This team's, oh, uh, we're down by four right now. You know what I mean? Like I kept, that kept happening, uh, you know, offensively struggled, defensively still were playing a really good game, kept them in the game for a while. And then uh, as Kyle pointed out with about, what is that? Maybe about six minutes left in the game. Um, Indiana just yeah. went ape shit it's, and it's, Ohio State did like, Assembly Hall too. In yeah. Assembly Hall, it, it's it's hard. It's hard. It's hard winning in there. And yeah, Nomad brings up a good point too. It's what we did to Duke too. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, yeah, except finished that game. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. It's you know only getting twenty nine or just under thirty percent from the three point line. It it mm-hmm. just. And normally when Ohio State's missing three-pointers, they're making up for it with rebounds. But, you know, Indiana's a real big team underneath. And, you know, Zed Key, frankly, didn't meet that challenge. Um, Kyle Young played, but not a lot. We saw more minutes out of Kyle Young in the uh, game against Northwestern, and that shows... And, of course, you know, EJ Liddell returns to form against Northwestern, and, and that shows... Um, but before we, before we start talking about that too much, Kyle, uh, 
Indiana, anything else about this Indiana game you want to talk about? Yeah, it was it was a team when you had two big forwards uh, that just absolutely really no started their dominant. They really started their dominance there, and just gotta learn. You just gotta learn from your mistake and really, really cut back on those turnovers. Yeah, yeah, it's it's something Ohio State's gonna have to keep working on. Um, it's it, and I, and I, again, there's a lot of veterans on this team, but there's a lot of veterans who haven't played together on this team. Uh, the, the more that, you know, EJ Liddell and Wheeler play together, the better. And the more that guys like Brennan stop being freshmen and, and start being seasoned basketball players as the weeks go on, the better. And also, you know, mix that with them actually playing together. Yep. Mix Kyle Young in because of the chemistry that he has with EJ Liddell. The more Kyle Young is on the field, on the field, on the court, the better. Yeah. The the more you can sort of turn this team back into a cohesive unit, the better. Yeah. All right. All right. Now on to the Northwestern game, Jared. But before that, let's, let's go ahead and hear from, from the Iron Bean Coffee Company, Jared. Yeah. Iron Bean Coffee Company. Um, Let's see. Let's talk a bit about the Rage Against the Dying of the Light. The Rage Against the Dying of the Light has notes of cherry, milk, chocolate, orange, maybe a bit of a rose petal in there, but it's not a flavor coffee. Don't 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 mistake this description. This is just the natural notes and flavors in the in the beans. Um, it's a medium body with a long finish, um, it, leaving you plenty of time to enjoy the smooth balance and flavors and the aromas and all of the those notes I was telling you about. Uh, let's see, another another medium roast coffee would be the Ride or Die. It's a gentle, distinctive version of the classic American breakfast cup made from Brazilian yellow bourbon beans. Uh, let's see, uh, let's let's finish out our our mediums by switching over to the cast iron. Cast Iron's a medium roast coffee made with 100% single origin Honduran Arabica beans. Um, then let's talk about the Rocco. Now the Rocco, also available in a dark, but this is a medium still. We're talking about our medium roast coffees. Yes, no matter. I did say bourbon, but it's it's not it's not that bourbon, unfortunately for you. Although the, hey, it's an upper. In the morning we do coffee. At night we do bourbon. So, uh, yeah, the Rocco, available both medium and dark. So you get to pick your poison on that. Um, it's a, a special Ethiopian natural. Uh, that's that's the Rocco. The Thor is kind of a darker medium. It's like it's, it's, it's a medium dark. It's a medium dark. Um, that's, that's another great one. Um, and if you're looking for something that's the opposite of that, uh, get, get get this, it's the, the Loki is the opposite of the Thor. It's medium, but on the lighter side. It's more of a light roast coffee. So you have, um, what stops me from mixing the two? I assume you're talking about uh, coffee and bourbon and not, and not the Thor and Loki. So I'm going to work on that assumption and say, have you never heard the term Irish up that coffee? Which, by the way, might be racist, as I say it. Might be racist. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, that that is the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, you can find your very own new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Cancel me, gangland. Can't listen. Casual racism against the Irish is acceptable for Ohio State fans this offseason. It is just our duty as fans to engage in casual, casual racism, specifically against the Irish, until the Notre Dame game. I'm sorry, look, that, that's the rules of fandom. I'm sorry. All right, Jared, moving on from <laughs> Indiana to Kyle North wants none of that conversation. <laughs> nope, I want nothing of that. Uh, Northwestern game. We just we just finished watching the Northwestern game, and Ohio State had just as many points they did against Indiana. I'm sorry. In the first I'm half. Sorry. 
I'm sorry, Kyle. Uh, Nomad says, as a ginger, I get final say, and then he drops in an, a, uh, I'll allow it, gif. <laughs> All right. So, Ohio State, Ohio State here, 95-87 victory over Northwestern. Very happy to see the offensive output, but man, 87 points to Northwestern, though? That, that, that's, that's my <laughs> first thought about now. Right. Maybe I'm just looking at just the negative part of it, like 95 points. Wow, that's a that's a big um, offensive showing here, and rightfully rightfully so. As we'll get into a little bit more deeper numbers here, but yeah, 95 points in this game, 51 in the first half, and Ohio State shot 57 percent from the field, which is just ridiculous. 57 point, 57 percent, and was 26 for 27. Behind the um, behind the free throw line. Okay, but Kyle, let me let me let me counter your horrible negativity, and your negativity, Kyle. It's 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 terrible. You need to stop it. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> let me let me let me counter it by saying this: EJ Liddell scored 17 points in five minutes. The first five minutes of the game. EJ Liddell, who was on a a a real cold streak scoring wise. We talked about how he had troubles against Nebraska. We talked about how he had troubles against Indiana. Uh, Nomad brought up the question a bit ago saying, um, you know, maybe he was just recovering from, from the Rona. And yeah, I mean, that's at least what he said during interviews. He said during interviews that, you know, he's just, he didn't feel like himself but then during practice between Indiana and this game, he said he started feeling like himself again. So you're like, just because you're just because you've cleared that virus from your system, it still leaves you tired and fatigued and worn out and, and everything else. So. And, you know, maybe even the lungs weren't completely there like he he just wasn't right. And, you know, it's it's a tough disease. It's a tough virus. I think he has that right to not be right. And uh, then then he was right all of a sudden. Um, yeah. Kyle, Ohio State never trails in this game. Uh, they were they were tied 2-2. And then were never even tied again after that. Well, they were also tied 0-0, in, in all fairness. They were tied 0-0. They were tied 2-2. Uh, but after that, Ohio State led the entire game. Northwestern mm-hmm. tried to make it interesting a couple times, uh, but Ohio State held them off. Um, held them off the basically the entire game. Um, you know that that huge lead that EJ Liddell got hitting, uh, I think five for five on his first three three point attempts was it or maybe did yeah. he get six for six? I forget. No, he, was, he, no, he was he was five for six in that in that first half there. Um, Behind the three point line, yeah, just okay. ridiculous showing. So his, from his first, DJ, yeah, his DJ first, Liddell. his first five three point attempts, getting those seventeen points in five minutes, and Ohio State yeah. just never gave that lead back. No, nah. no, nah. and it was a great stat from you that I saw on Twitter. EJ Liddell is the first Division One player with thirty points, five blocks, and five threes in a game since two thousand and ten. So it's been 11 years since that kind of number has been put up. That, that tells you just that how great of a game that EJ Liddell had. Not just not just EJ, but um, Malachi as well. Or excuse me. Um, yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah, Malachi. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had 24. He had 24 points as well too. Like, yeah. Just great, great game. And man, he's man, he's he's been so huge for Ohio State these these past few games here, and. Yeah, I, I got I got to look at his um his numbers here. Like it's he's put up s- such great such great numbers. Uh yeah, he had thirty he had thirty five points against Nebraska, which I think was his big coming out party. And then he led the team against Indiana, um the previous game too. Really coming out of his shell and right when Ohio State really needed somebody else, especially when you have especially when you have um. Um, Arns, who's who was over over behind a three pointer in this game. I you know I know we all like Arns and everything, but 
Um, I'm just going to say I, I want some other guys to get some minutes. He's been too streaky behind the arc. He's not a good passer. And that, that, is that's, that's, defensively... That's my, biggest con- that's my biggest concern, Jared, with ours. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with him taking threes. Shoot, shoot the threes. I'm fine yeah, with Yeah, yeah, yeah. I but, would forgive him. He, he's... He's been so, he's been so, especially as of late, he's been so bad with the turnovers. How many, how many times he's thrown the ball carelessly or trying to make a pass that shouldn't have been trying to thread that needle there. Right. Nah, he needs to kind of take a, take a step back from trying to make those kind of passes. Well, he, he needs to take a step back on the bench. I'm sorry. I'll just go ahead and say it. Um, I know he's like a captain and a leader and, and all of that. Uh, Gangland agrees with me. Nomad says he's no Threebler. And, he, and he's not. He like, was was John Diebler the best defensive player Ohio State's had? Uh, no, no. But he also wasn't nearly as streaky as, as Arns is. And Arns has just not been great from from the three point line, especially when Ohio state has needed him to be, um, that, he's a defensive, he's a defensive liability and he's been turning the ball over too much. Yeah. Might as well put one of the young you, guys you, in. You, you, one of the reasons why you don't put young guys in is because you're afraid they're going to turn over the ball too much. Well, yeah, those, those are the three things you nail right on, uh, too streaky when, when Ohio state really needs somebody to get the offense going, turnovers, I mean, I mean, looking at looking at the year, he's he's not bad. He's he's shooting over forty percent behind the three point line. He's not, he's not bad. No, it's just you, I, th- I think you I think you said it right. It's he's not, not making them when Ohio State needs him to make them. Yeah, like where where is he? Like during the Indiana game, where they really needed someone to step up offensively. Yeah. Yeah. Man, it, it was good. It was good seeing Kyle Young back on the. Back on the court again. There, he had. Um, uh, I didn't. I didn't quite catch how many minutes he had, but I don't he, think he, those he stats got, are he out. He got yet. to see the. He got to see the. Um, the court a little bit here, uh, but it's it's always good seeing Kyle Young back on that court. Yeah, uh, Ohio State better with the turnovers in this game. It was a faster pace game, a lot more the, the, possessions the, the second, in this game. Um, but you know, yeah, still they, three less turnovers. That's not bad. They they did have less turnovers than their opponent in Northwestern, which is good. Um, you know, it's it's not it's still not ideal. You really want to try and get that number under yeah. ten. Like, let's get that yeah, number they, under they, ten. But yeah, they they had they had nine in the first half. So the second half much better. Five five in right. the second half definitely better. But the big key key thing I want to take away from this Northwestern game. I don't want to be a down, Debbie Downer here. I mean, Hossie scored 95 points. Ridiculous. That's awesome. But they allowed 16 offensive rebounds to Northwestern here. Northwestern had had so many more opportunities. And, and they, and they yeah, and they scored a lot. They scored a ton because the defense did not play good. A lot of that because of the offensive rebounds. Uh, it's... I think if Ohio State really reduced that offense rebounds, this wouldn't have been a close game at all. But it is what it is here, and that's the type of team Northwestern is. I'm, I, I saw on here this was the worst loss for Northwestern all season, and that's right. by eight points. Uh, Jared and I were kind of kidding around before we hit the record button. Northwestern is the Nebraska football this year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's just kind of who Northwestern is. Uh, yeah, the the defense not not where you want the defense to be in in this basketball game, and um, yeah. it's it, also sometimes the other teams just is is just hitting it. Um, Northwestern over forty percent from the three point arc. Um, one player in particular went absolutely nuts. Um, well, yeah, they, so they had, they had quite a few. Uh, Ty Berry. Ty Berry is the one that it was specifically who I was talking on. about from the three yeah. point mark. They they had they had three players who scored over twenty points, but Ty Berry was the one that a lot of people were really keeping an eye on because I mean he's he's the main guy for for Northwestern there and rightfully so. But yeah, Northwestern really shared the ball out there and yeah, it's just the kind of game like Jared said. They just 
They were just hitting in stride. Yeah, yeah. It's well sometimes also like scoring points sometimes just leads to scoring points. Sometimes it's just that type of game. Sometimes it's a little bit more of a high number of possessions type of game, and sometimes it's more of a slow it down sort of game. And yeah. well, that's funny that's br- just basketball. Funny you, br- funny you bring that up. Ohio State actually had one less uh field goal attempt in this game than they did in against Indiana. But yet scored almost twice as much. Well, I'll tell you why that was. Ohio State, uh, and I don't know. Check, check, check me on the numbers on this because I don't, I don't, I've not looked yet. Yeah, I feel like Ohio State didn't, uh, especially if we're talking free throws. Yes, the did free not throws for, were huge. did not, did not force themselves to the line much against Indiana. Completely so, agree. Yeah, completely agree. They, Twelve attempts to twenty-seven. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was a big thing right there, too. Yes. Yeah. So uh, they, they weren't forcing free throws, I, I think, is one of the reasons why you see that discrepancy between yep. the. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But okay, uh, yeah, it's, um, a, it's, a, it's a good win. Um, Northwestern, not a bad. I mean, there's so much talent in the Big Ten. I think if you win a Big Ten game, that's always good if you do it in somewhat convincing fashion. Without your head coach, um, we didn't yeah, even that's... bring that up. <laughs> yeah, we didn't even bring that up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right, so the next Kudos games, to the Ohio so State staff for for yeah. winning one without the coach. Yep. So the next two games here, Ohio State, heading on over to Wisconsin, the 13th, which that is a Thursday night, Thursday night up in Madison, Wisconsin, and then coming back home, taking on not our rival next Sunday. Uh, that is correct, sir. Um, we'll probably preview. Should we, we'll yep. be able to preview, but yeah, we can preview both of those games this week. I don't know if it'll be one episode or two, but we're going to do our best to figure that out before, uh, before the world ends. And, uh, yeah, let's Kyle. I think that's it for this episode. Yeah, that's it. Okay. We well, Nomad, we're done. I know we're we're gonna do a second episode, but also we're done. So all right, uh, Kyle, that uh, is it. I want to encourage everyone to come join our Discord server. Um, if you are listening to this, by the way, on the audio, uh, do us a favor. Go go follow us over on YouTube. We are now running independent of the uh, the Buckeye Scoop, and we are trying to get our YouTube numbers up. A salute to you two, Gangland. Um, yeah, so. It's uh, we're trying to get those numbers up. So if you could uh, just go to youtube.thesloopcast.com or just go to YouTube and search Sloopcast. Find us there. Give us a follow. We would appreciate that. We'll find Gangland. Uh, you, you, I'll take my salute back. Rude. So rude. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, I think this is a big thing because this happened right when we hit record, Jared. Yeah, yeah. Bob Saget. What? Bob Saget. Bob Saget? Yes, Don't... He passed away. No! Yep. Oh. Yeah. That's a kick not... the... Yeah, 2022 not really starting off all that great. Oh, man. Yeah. This is my actual reaction to this news. I'm just sad now. Bob. Kyle, I mm, I don't have words. I'm I'm sad. Yeah, I think this is complete complete shock. Complete shock from what what I'm briefly seeing here without reading too much into it. again. Happened just as we hit record here, but yeah, just a lot, lot of. A lot of memories for me just watching him from shows. I mean, Full House was the big, big one, but yeah, it's a ter- terrible thing to hear. Yeah, that's uh, genuinely very sad. Um, mm. It's kind of, I don't know why, but this reminds me of when Norm MacDonald died. Um, what I loved about Bob Saget was how multiple he was. Um, because he was simultaneously like the most popular TV dad of the 90s. 
I mean, that's, that's saying a lot. And maybe someone wants to counter me on that, but like top five, like you want to fight me on that? We can have a, like a top five conversation, TV dads of the nineties. It's like, I don't know. It's like him and Bojack Horseman, right? So point is, is that he had, he was just like clean cut, full house, family friendly. But then he was also like during his do during his stand up, just like one of the dirtiest comics on the planet. And I, I love that he was 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 both. And I, I think that, uh, I don't know, I think that that's always uh, something I thought was real special, was just how he balanced being both of those things and, and did such a great job at both of those things. So yeah. uh, that's that's about as good as I can do um, without any preparation. I'm sad now. Um, thanks, Kyle. The <laughs> I'm, I'm blaming you for his death now. That's what I'm doing here. Um, anything else? That's yeah. less depressing in Kyle's corner, Kyle. Uh, anything less no, depressing? No, you don't. You don't. Uh, well, there's there's some good uh, football news, but we'll cover that in our in our football episode. Yeah, we're we're doing an episode of Silly Season right after we're done with this one. So, um, yeah, uh, I guess I guess bye, everybody. Sorry, sorry. Uh, if that's news to you, if you also just now learned that, I'm sorry. That, that we had to be the ones to tell you. Uh, tonight's ending music will be a band from Cincinnati. They are called Harbor. H-A-R-B-O-U-R. Harbor. And uh, that's that's it. I'm still, I'm still thinking about Bob Saget. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is uh, Harbor from Cincinnati. Mm-hmm.